It's 1.30 in the morning and my phone rings. A phone call that, that early in the morning is never good news. My husband woke me up and told me that my mom had just called me and that my brother was in a horrible accident and that I needed to get to the hospital as soon as I could. Drinking is a problem in the United States. It affects the people who we are, who are drinking and driving, their families, and maybe another family if there is a victim involved. Once caught drinking and driving, it also affects the person and what they have to go through just to get their life back. I have a brother who was a drunk driver and actually ran into a house and killed somebody. In this speech, we will cover drunk driving statistics, what it does to the person and their family, and the economic impact it has on our country. Drinking is a major issue in the United States, and with that, you put alcohol with it, that means a lot of trouble. Drinking and driving is an issue in the U.S. According to the DUI, lifetips.com, one person is killed every half hour due to drunk driving. Each year, approximately 16,000 people are killed in a drunk driving accident. Over 1.4 million drivers were arrested in 2010 for driving under the influence of alcohol or some other sort of narcotic, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigations. CenturyCouncil.org stated, on average, one person drive, dies in a drunk driving fatality every 51 minutes. In 2010, 52 alcohol-impaired driving fatalities were noted for the state of Nebraska. 60% of alcohol-involved driving fatalities involve drivers with a high BAC, which is a blood alcohol content level. 7 out of 10 drivers involved in a fatal drunk driving crashes are hardcore drunk drivers. EdgarSchneider.com stated that more than 181 children were killed due to drunk drivers when they were driving when they were drunk. Think about this. Count out 10 of your closest friends. Did you realize that 3 in every 10 American will be involved in an alcohol-related crash at some point in their life, according to edgarschneider.com? It was April 20th, 2001. I received a phone call that would change my brother's life forever, and including my own life. I went to the hospital and walked into a room. Seeing my brother lay there in black jeans to leave the room as I was... He was in his black jeans, he was covered in blood, and he was non-responsive. The nurse there tried to tell me to leave as they were trying to stabilize him so then he could be transported to Omaha, Nebraska. At that point, I didn't know if he was alive or dead or what the circumstances were. Father Joe took me into my own private room and discussed with me on what had happened, and all I could think to myself was, was his daughter involved, as he would get custody of her every other weekend. And thankfully, this weekend was not his weekend to have her. My brother had a BAC limit that was three times over the legal limit. In Nebraska, the legal limit is .08. He ran a stop sign and probably passed out. And somehow he missed a row of trees and went into a brick house and ran into a brick house and killed an innocent man sleeping in his bed and threw his wife and a newborn baby into a closet. He was then transported to Omaha and he was sent to Methodist Hospital. There he was told, the we were told that the next 24 hours were the most critical as his conditions were not good at all. These are some pictures of my brother at the hospital. We did not know his fate at the time as his brain was swollen and he had a lot of fluid on it. I remember seeing him like this along with a smell in his room that to this day I cannot correlate the smell and what it relates to. Um, I, remember, I remember hearing all the monitors of the heart and the pulse going off. I remember the breathing apparatus moving up and down and watching his chest move in and out. And I just remember, I just remember waiting for a twitch of his hands or his eye movements that you were waiting for that hours past to see that he would wake up. 
but in real reality, he was non-responsive and motionless. He was in a coma. Um, after he woke up, he was convicted of vehicular homicide. They, he was always guarded by a cop there at that time once he was charged with this. Um, when he woke up, he could not recognize people. He didn't know how to eat. He did not know how to walk as his brain was trying to heal. And still to this day, he still has problems with a lot of things and his brain is still trying to heal. Next was his sentencing. That was a difficult process for him and for us as a family. Not a single person believes that he did this on purpose, as he really is a good guy, but he made a really bad choice and alcohol was involved. With bad choices you make, you lie in the nest that you make, so his destiny was prison. He was sent to prison for over a year and a half. As a family member, the person involved is hurt dearly, along with the victims, but remember to think about your own family or your parents. I have seen my mom cry over this, and as a parent, you feel guilty for what happened, and you feel it's your fault and what you did wrong in parenting. Imagine this, taking your mom, or even yourself, or maybe a kids if they are involved, to any prison where they feel they are violated, because you have to be patted down just to visit your family member because of the choices they make. Or all all the collect calls that have come in, and when you have a collect call, they are monitoring every word that you have. As you know, prison has no privacy. You have, you have no clue how hard it is to live in a small community. Many times I heard that my brother was a vegetable, that the whole family are drunks. Um, this was very tough and very, and you feel that everyone knows who you are and they're always talking about you because of the small town feeling. These times were very hurtful as people who like to gossip with no known facts can be very cruel. After his prison term, my brother cannot have his license for 15 years. Even after getting his license, his insurance rate will skyrocket and it'll be very expensive. He lost his job and it's very hard to find a job because he's now considered a felon. That $20 to $30 an hour job has now been cut in half or is even less than what you can make. He can no longer hunt because he has no, he has no permission to hold a gun, a possession of gun. As his family and his relationship, he and his daughter are very distant. And as he is my brother and my sister, we all look upon it as alcohol. He needs a lot of help with it still to this day. And because of alcohol, he ruined his life. We're not going to allow it to ruin ours. Let's look at how drunk driving affects the economy. Drunk driver doesn't just hurt and affect the person driving, but it also hurts the economy. Drunk driving costs the United States $130 billion a year, according to National Highway Traffic Administration. The National Highway Traffic City Safety Administrator stated that drunk driving costs each adult in this country almost $500 per year. Now that we heard about drunk driving, and let's recover and conclude and hope that the choice you make is not to drink and drive. In this speech, I have talked about persuading you not to drink while driving by telling you statistics, how this has affected my family, and how it affects the economy. Next time you choose to drink and drive, I hope you remember to look back on this speech and think who you might hurt or even kill. Imagine this, having your parents have to pick out your own casket for your funeral. Is it worth it? I hope you choose a designated driver or choose not to drink and drive.